Welcome back, guys. We're back. To the Monolith Film Club Podcast. What's up? Joined with What's Lee, up? Dante, Nick. And today we're talking about the movie Perpetrator. 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 A Shutter original. Brought Spoiler alert. If you haven't watched the movie, go watch it and come back. But uh, if you don't care, just you know, continue watching. But you know, whatever. <clears throat> Came out last year, twenty twenty three, by uh, Jennifer Reeder. Mm-hmm. So this is part of our female directed horror, horror yeah. series. Yeah. We've been trying to to highlight some mm-hmm. highlight some 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 women in the industry. Maybe not the best spokesperson for women directing horror. Oh, we're gonna get the, there. <laughs> this movie in particular. Oh, yeah. Well, but uh, so um, this so this was a this was a Fantasia miss. This is when we missed that premiered at Fantasia. Oh, oh did it? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So it premiered at Fantasia. It was getting a decent amount of hype, but we um, we missed it. And I've been hearing about it ever since. Really? So it's been on my radar, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Is this I know. I, th- I thought it was some... What? Sorry, what is it? I thought it was just some random movie you fucking plucked out of the shutter thing. No, it's been on my radar. Okay. Um... And I, I and I, I had watched the reason I, I pitched it now instead of earlier is because I watched uh I watched her short film that's on Criterion. Did you end up watching it? No. no. Oh, I looked on Shutter and I was like, oh fuck, it must be somewhere else. I didn't think to look on Criterion. It was on Criterion, yeah. Ah, okay. So I watched her short film there. Mm-hmm. Uh, was, was this her first feature? No, not even. Oh, okay. Uh, called her short film came out in twenty fifteen. It's called Blood Below the Skin. It's mm-hmm. on the Criterion channel. Ooh. And she's also oh. she also directed the. Uh, that movie there, the envelope story, of VHS ninety four. Oh, that's a good movie. Oh no, have you are you familiar with the VHS no, I don't series? Think so. You don't, no. you don't know. It you're, sounds you're, familiar, but I don't you're know. a horror movie critic. You don't know VHS. I know. I'm, okay. not, I'm not sure. So it's VHS is a series that's been going on for quite a while now. They have VHS one, VHS two, VHS eighty five, VHS ninety four, VHS like ninety nine, VHS viral, something like that. Mm-hmm. Also Fantasia <clears throat> movies. Yeah, all of them. Probably I think most, so. Probably a lot. Of yeah, them. it's um, there's always one envelope story, interspliced with shorts, all filmed to be like VHS style. Okay. Usually the envelope story involves someone watching these VHSs. Mm-hmm. What does it mean the envelope story? Um, like the overarching story of the whole movie. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like like pa- pandemonium. Okay. Like in the in the first one. Or the second one, I don't remember. I, I get them mixed story. up. Yeah, there's like an A story that's going on in the B, background. C, D, e, F, G, H, I and then there's a bunch oh. of shorts in this place. Yeah, right. exactly. A, B, A, C, A, D. Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, um, like in the first one, it's like these guys who break into a house mm-hmm. to presume to do something to rob them, I guess. Okay. And they find the house to be like relatively empty with just a giant stack of VHSs and a single TV. Oh, so they start watching these VHS tapes. And that's those are the shorts that you, the viewer, watches as well. And then... They end up being the victims of the next VHS type. Serves them right for breaking. Yeah, yeah. That's not always the theme of the envelope story. Okay. But it, it, there's you, there's usually some implication of people watching VHS tapes on it. In it. And she did VHS. She did VHS ninety four. I said right. She did the envelope story for that one. I I I don't remember it. They're kind of forgettable as a series. The mm-hmm. first two are really good. Okay. The rest are kind of forgettable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same formula. Though? Same formula every time, yeah. Okay. yeah. They just, new directors every time. Mm-hmm. Um, the most recent one was a standout because of the, they had some big time horror directors doing the newest one. I think it's VHS 99. They had uh, Flying Lotus. Oh, cool. Yeah. And uh, uh, Johannes Roberts, who did... Uh, not the original Strangers, but the sequel. Okay. Yeah. Right. No there was another. Mm. Was it Liv Taylor? Is that her name? Liv Taylor. Yeah. The tra- in. Like the girl from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. The Strange. Um. Probably. Yeah, I think so. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Anyways, uh, David Bruckner is the guy behind the VHS series. He produces all of them. Okay. I think he directed the first, the first one, some mm-hmm. of it, or whatever. But um, anyways, so that's that's how I knew of Jennifer Reeder before this movie came out, before Perpetrator came out. Okay. Um, and then we missed it at Fantasia. It's been on my radar, yeah. So so that's pretty much it. The short film. I hated, mm-hmm. which is why I was like, why is 
why is her feet giving her so much headache? So okay. that's kind of why I wanted to check it out. I'm surprised that Criterion too if it was shit. <clears throat> I didn't like it at all. Okay. I mean, it, it was like very. Uh, if it's similar to the movie, then I see why. Yeah, I mean, like, it's pretty similar. Why would you pick for I, a curator? Oh, the spoilers, bro. Well. <laughs> no, well, let's, let's, let, let's get the cat out of the bag. Yeah. What did we all think? Also, guys, we are joined today by the za Wow. Ooh, the slice returns. The slice it. returns. It's our guest guest feature. Uh, so yeah, first impressions. What do you guys think? I thought it was pretty stinky, dude. Yeah. <laughs> really, I thought it was amazing. Did you There's actually? No, way, no I'm joking. You suck. <laughs> yeah, I hated it. Uh, it was like it was pretty bad, but there were scenes that I liked. Sure. There were some scenes that were done pretty well, but it was funny because, like, like, there'd be a scene that sucks and horribly written, horrible everything in the scene. Yeah. Then literally a minute after, the scene's good, then it goes back to sucking. Yeah. Pretty hard. I mean, some of the fucking talking scenes. Oh, oh yeah. they're so bad. Ten oh. minutes of two people talking about bullshit. Yeah. Fuck the, the, off. the dialogue is... A little rough. Very cringe. Oh, yeah. That's That was my main problem with... And then you get some lesbian action. <laughs> <laughs> My main problem with her short was that too. It's yeah. another high school type story. Um, just bad dialogue, mm-hmm. just super cringe. I, I wrote was... down my favorite piece of dialogue. Mm-hmm. It's at the very beginning, and it's the main character. She goes, "I'm trying to get out of this place," and the other guy goes, "Just try, sugar pop." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's presumably her dad? Who calls yeah. her daughter sugar pop? <laughs> so strange. Yeah. Yeah. And the concept, like, I, like, I was kind of digging the concept of it, like, the mysticism of the movie. Mm-hmm. But then, like, they build up all this mysticism, but then they have, like, this, 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 uh, antagonist plot with the fucking yeah. cop. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, just keep it in the high school. Like, why do you have to do this other fucking plot yeah. with the girls missing mm-hmm. and the, the police officer and Kirk's dad and, like, and then it goes back to the high school. Yeah. I thought the high school parts were the funniest parts. Like, were pretty fun to watch. Yeah, even then, I thought. Oh yeah, the yeah. Writing, the best writing was that fucking uh, the secretary with the beat up face. Yeah, she had, um, some, she had some good bits. She had yeah. good bits. She yeah. was pretty yeah. good. Um, but overall, it's pretty, pretty bad. bad. Pretty lackluster. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. Hard to get through. Like mm-hmm. there were some scenes where I was like, okay, it's gonna get good now, and then it goes back to being shit. Yeah. You know? I, halfway through watching it, I almost texted you guys, being like, okay, maybe never mind. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. That bad? Yeah. That's funny. I, I mean, really. Yeah. I like the. So like this main character, she finds that she has these special powers. Mm. She can like she has more... turbo turbo empathy. She calls yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that it's just it just looks like a Snapchat filter, like not oh, walking yeah. on, you know, where it's just like yeah. That was so bad. Second. The effects are terrible. <laughs> like, like that was so one thing bad. where I was like, the filter. That's <laughs> Wait, the blood is really cool though. The, they do the blood really well. They do. Yeah, it wasn't dark yeah. enough though. It was pretty orange. The blood. In some sense, because other times when it was like that thick, very goopy blood. Yeah, the yeah, thick yeah, piece of but in yeah. the mouth, it wasn't like it wasn't that good. Mm-hmm. But I liked, um, like, like, oh yeah, with the special effects and like, so the main character when she is like going into her mysticism mode a bit, her face kind of morphs and they use like this effect on it, and it's just so bad. <laughs> She's like looking in the mirror. And it's like, well, like her face is changing up a little bit. It's it's like really, yeah. it's like a high school project kind of. Did it? Yeah. It's literally like the filter not catching. And yeah, it was it's like on, a Snapchat face swap filter. Yeah, it was worse than that. Yeah, it was worse than that. But the thing is, the those those scenes would be so much better if they just didn't do the CG part and just had the voice change. Yeah, and maybe her cadence changed as yeah. an actor. And just like, but yeah, th- that was pretty bad. And <clears throat> yeah, so um, I didn't prep. They usually I prep a little summary. I think it's okay. I didn't take any yeah. notes. What is it? There's girls that go missing in this town. This main character, she gets moved to another town and it's in this town. Yeah. Goes to the school. Everyone's kind of weird a bit, but not weird enough for it to be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Like trying to be a bit weird, but it's not, not work, not pushing it far enough no. down. And, uh, you know, she's got these magic powers and she solves the, she solves the mystery. Yeah. yeah she unlocks, much. she goes, she gets sent to live with her aunt. Mm-hmm. Played by Alicia Silverstone. Yeah, but a bad performance by her, too. She's not a good actress. No, it's just weird. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we did Clueless. We love Clueless. Clueless rock. Great movie. Yeah. I don't know, have you seen adult Alicia Silverstone or anything well, else? she's good in uh, Killing the Sacred Deer. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And I think that's it. I think maybe. I haven't watched any, anything else by her. seen her commercials. I think Killing of the Sacred Deer mm-hmm. and Clueless might be her only two good movies. Yeah, dude, this is rough. This yeah. is a funny, like... 
continental accent she was trying to do. Yeah, it's and, weird like, as yeah. fuck. Madam of the Manor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's it's very, yeah, very yeah. Madam of the Manor yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? It, uh, we did the Love Witch too in the series. It mm-hmm. was almost like she was trying to be that kind yeah. of Love Witch yeah. type. I mean, I thought the Love Witch rocked. Though. Love Witch was really good. I thought the Love Witch yeah. was really yeah. good. Weird movie, but really good. Yeah. But this thing, I mean. It, it really just wasn't enough in every area. I think all the performances the, were this, terrible. This, this yeah. might be the most forgettable movie we've done. No, yeah. we did fucking Halen's movie there. Joshy, you yeah. like Joshy? Yeah. I like Joshy. Yeah. That movie stunk. <laughs> but you see, you, you remember that. <laughs> well, I remember it was bad. Uh, yeah. No, I don't know. This movie, man, it was like, it was hard to get through. Yeah. It was just, but it, it's just, it was just so, like, it's not even like so bad it's good kind of thing. It's just mm. kind of like, rough. it's just boring. It's not yeah. entertaining. Like, there were some scenes that I, like, I thought were funny and good, like, you know, when the main character, Johnny, goes to the secretary for the first time and she's got that bloody nose. And the secretary's grilling her about, like, what she does. And she, that felt kind of natural, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But other parts didn't feel like natural dialogue at all, you know? But some parts did. Like, um, what's another good one? Um, I mean, my favorite part is when it keeps coming up with it and they go, uh, code murder slaughterhouse murder, level, yeah, yeah, yeah. murder <laughs> level murder level bloodbath <laughs> yeah code massacre level bloodbath yeah yeah there you oh, go. it's yeah, so yeah. like cheesy and yeah. dork it's also <laughs> i think such a, that's such a long sentence for a fucking yeah. emergency code word me so here shout out to my boy jesse james griffiths right fisher griffiths i never know what you what's up i've known this guy my whole life right you don't know his name though is it Mr. Wing? No, no, those are those, <laughs> those are his, <laughs> those those are his two last names. But I just I always mix up like oh, which one order. I call him. Okay. Yeah? But I've known this guy my whole life, and we used to live together when I was a teenager. And we'd always go do like mis- mis- mischievous shit at night. And our code our code word was monkey slut. Okay. But that rolls off the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good, monkey slut. Yeah, yeah. Points if you know where that code name's from. Uh, but yeah. It's and this one is like massacre level bloodbath. It yeah. just sounds ridiculous. Code massacre level bloodbath. At that point, just say active shooter. Yeah, or, or eight syllables. Or lollipop. Yeah, or anything. Yeah. Danger. Yo. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So so the so yeah so the dialogue writing was terrible. yeah brutal. One of my main problems too, because it's kind of like a murder mystery. It's it's almost a whodunit. Because because there's this yeah. there's this B the A plot is this young girl turning eighteen and developing these powers that runs in her family. Yeah. The B plot and they end up merging, of course, is that in the town she goes to live with her aunt. There's all these girls who are getting kidnapped. Yeah. But the movie only introduces three characters, mm-hmm. and half yeah, of yeah. them are kidnapped. The other half are this girl family. There's only a handful of characters who aren't obviously yeah. innocent. Well, and they all end up being characters. yeah. There's three yeah. other characters who aren't obviously innocent, and they all end up being involved. Yeah. So yeah. the the who, the whole mystery mm-hmm. behind the kidnappings is instantly eviscerated. Yeah. Because and also, second... like her. So so for those who didn't watch the movie, her power is that she gets turbo empathy. And it's yeah. like this kind of like internal thing where she can kind of like like really just empathize really 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 hard with someone else and like know where they are kind of thing, and she could channel them through her but the problem is that she never it never that never gets used to solve the mystery no it never does it never gets used to solve like there's there's no point in having this power like what's the point yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it should have been one story the other probably and yeah yeah and there's this recurring line which was my least favorite of all where mm-hmm. when they're describing the powers they keep saying you're feeling all the feelings yeah and it's like, that felt like such, like, a, that's such a meme, like, I, oh, I'm in my feelings. Like, that's yeah. such a meme fucking line. Like, yeah. why would you make that And the And the, pow- the power's like, called the forever ending? Yeah, whatever the fuck that means. It's such a dumb name for, the yeah. power doesn't even have to do anything to do with that. It's just, uh, it's just so dumb. And she also has, for no, no reason, nothing that I could decipher, apart mm-hmm. from it being a metaphor for women developing their period. She has these blood powers. Yeah. Well, like everyone, everyone in the movie is like getting a nosebleed all the time. Just yeah, if it works down there, I think. I think so. I think yeah. that's, that's her when she feels their feelings that they both. Oh really? Nosebleed. Because when she talks to the secretary for the first time, the secretary has like a beat up nose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Starts nosebleed, and they're both the both the nose. This is one of the scenes that I kind of liked. Yeah. Was this this whole scene with the secretary? They're both just staring at her silently. They're both their nose, and they just both go like this at the same time. I thought it was yeah. pretty good. 
There's a lot of those. But she wasn't empathizing with that character when when both her nose bled. Like I don't, I don't know. Because she was feeling all the feelings. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it, yeah, like uh, her blood does. She, her blood. She, her blood is a portal to a different dimension. She goes to the blood world. She goes to the. Blood yeah, world. she like gets her period on the floor, like her her period comes out onto the floor. Yeah. And like she gets transported down it, like kind of flowed. into like yeah. this, this, this like uh, e- ethereal kind of like bath of blood. Yeah. I like too how they shot it where they have the like the pool set up and there's a camera in the pool, but the guys jumping in the pool aren't going deep enough. So the whole frame is just them going like that. Deep. Okay, we're in frame. Okay, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. We're yeah, here yeah. now, and this is all red, and they're just here. Yeah, wasn't the best time though. No, I agree. And the yeah the. The ant bakes a cake with blood inside. She's supposed to eat the blood to activate the powers. Or yeah, something. but but then she says like, "Oh, the the cake wouldn't have done anything. It would just yeah. give more fuel to." Like it was kind of like what's up? There's a horror movie we did where it's kind of like that. Well, no, we didn't do horror. But it's, it, it kind of like that kind of thing kind of felt like Basket Case a little bit. Like you're feeding the monster, you know, a little mm-hmm. bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Basket Case rules. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> a way better Basket movie. Basket Case rules. <laughs> Vasquez is a top ten horror movie of all time, yeah. for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of guard. I mean, so the thing, like, and it wasn't, the like the 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 thematically, yeah. Relevant, sure. Interesting, no. Mm-hmm. Right, like the whole turbo empathy, and the coming of age story for a, a young girl becoming a woman. Yeah. And that whole thing of like, so her mom, anyone with these powers can change to be anyone else right? yeah but it was like this kind of thing ship shifter thing i mean the story is about kidnapping and and women being sexually assaulted and the whole mm. theme of it mm. what i thought it is like oh it could be anyone mm. right that's why these these main characters can literally be anyone because the, the whole point of the movie is that this yeah. type of thing can happen to anyone yeah but like the movie doesn't actually do anything interesting with that no and every like, every like Every thematic element to the movie is just kind of just one of those like oh yeah okay yeah and like, then, uh, like then, then even, it moves on even yeah. when the plot gets to like the the B plot with the villain and they're trying to solve a mystery yeah it's like before that happens this girl's disappearing like kind of seemed like normal it's like oh yeah girls disappear all the time yeah it's yeah true. we're used to it yeah mm-hmm. kind of thing you know oh I wonder when I'm gonna disappear oh, you know they all fuck mm-hmm. Kirk so you know yeah there's one dude at their school yeah. Yeah. He's a dog. Yeah. He's not even handsome. Sorry. Sorry, Kirk. Yeah, he wants to. He wants to fuck every girl. And uh, there's this weird plastic surgery C plot. Yeah. That runs through the whole movie that like keeps mm. getting mentioned but doesn't go anywhere. Never explained. And there's no bow tie really on the end of the story. No. The cop disappears at the end. We don't know if he's like this doctor or why everyone's getting the surgery. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. All the stuff just and yeah, they, they all happened. all her and all her friends come together in the house and they eat like an actual cake. Yeah, I was like, okay, kinda, whatever. Kinda silly, big pointy teeth at the end. Yeah, yeah, that was dumb, bro. I don't get. I didn't get that part either. That seemed like yeah. unnecessary. Yeah. Um, the only um marketing I saw for this thing was were, were the kaleidoscope shots. Those were pretty cool, yeah. but even they went nowhere. Yeah, no. It was just like, a, oh, nice. No, yeah. cool. uh, and then that's it. It looks like they ordered the Amazon lens. Yeah, yeah the literally. Patch yeah. On it, you know? uh, I did like I did picture. like some jokes in it. Like you know, at the end when Kirk's giving the speech, like oh, I had a letter to write it for you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna find whoever did this kind of thing, and and she starts getting the empathy where she feels like the guy getting yeah. hurt in the other room, and she's like fuck me, and then her friends like yeah fuck me. Yeah, they all just start yelling fuck me. Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. Um, oh no, what's another funny, like, I, like, yeah, the second, for me, the secretary was the funny, was the best part of the whole movie. I agree. That's she wasn't the there. The scene. Not even the scene, but like her mm. character. Okay. Over and over, she, her face gets more and more beat up as the movie goes. Yeah, she's getting more and more surgery, plastic yeah. done. Yeah, plastic presumably. surgery. Presumably. Presumably. It, and it's also implied that they're, this town is kidnapping these girls to take their body parts to give to the secretary. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. No, oh, I never even like, thought oh, she's gonna. Your mother's gonna have the the yeah. cheeks of a teenager or whatever. Like. Yeah, yeah, oh, the, 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 she, yeah. She, she, he like go home and pick up your mother. She wants a new neck. Is like one of the lines or something like that. Oh really? Yeah, I didn't fucking notice. But then they're like kidnapping girls of like every ethnicity. So what? He, she's gonna have like an African American neck. 
for no reason. Well, bro, it's like yeah, uh, it's like the TV show Oz. There's a scene in the Oz or an episode in Oz where one of the um, one of the Aryan Brotherhood prisoners um, gets like a, a, an infection in his gums, and he has to get like a like a skin transplant in his gums. Oh yeah. So he get like he gets like a black guy's a uh, gums. And he gets like excommunicated from the Aryan Brotherhood <laughs> in the show, and they all like like they all give like they're all he's basically like black in the show after That's that. That's so funny. And 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 the Oz, if you ever watched Oz, it's a brutal show. I always thought it was a, like a show based on the Wizard of Oz. No, it's 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 a it's the monkey. It's a it's, a, <laughs> it's the original prison show. Like it's it's an amazing show. Oh really? Oz is a top five TV show of all time, and it's very very disturbing show. It's not a funny show at all. Like it's very disturbing. It's very fucked up. But it's called Oz because the penitentiary is called Oswald Penitentiary. Oh, uh, okay. And they made a new unit in the, penitenti- in the penitentiary where every cell is glass, and they call that Emerald City uh, okay. in the show. I see. Um, but yeah, no, it's just a f- it's just fucked up in that part of the show where he gets a black guy's guns, and then yeah. he's like, he gets like, like really like beat up, and he becomes like part of like the trans community in the prison because of that. <laughs> <laughs> And even his, like, main Aryan friend, who's, like, the leader of the Aryan Brothers, a guy named uh, Vern Schillinger, fucking just hates him because he has a black guy's guns. And then... How can uh, they tell? Because his guns are different. fucking dark. They're not pink anymore. Do black people have darker guns? I, I, don't, I don't think they actually do, but in the show, they put it that way. Okay. Pitch black. <laughs> for, the, for the plot. No, it's like, he has, like, brown guns or whatever. But in the show, they make it so it's like that, you know? And, uh... At one point, the character, like, puts heroin all over his teeth and tries, like, cutting out his gums. God. And, uh, yeah, so that reminded me of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fun. I mean, there's, I caught two, the, 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 the first shot, the intro scene, it's like a cold opening, like, in Scream. Yeah. It, you, it, the first thing you see is one of the girls getting kidnapped. One of the best it, parts of the movie, by the way. I the agree. Of the movie. Uh, except for that fate flip to negative. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, weird. Weird. that's That's like, like a the, fucking whole movie. It was like, a, to me, it felt like a Halloween homage, that first scene. Mm-hmm. When young Michael Myers is wearing the mask and you have his POV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even the street and the sidewalk in the suburbs look very Haddonfield. Yeah. And then later with the blood on the bed, you get a Nightmare on Elm Street reference. Yeah. I don't know if those were intentional, but I, I caught those. Dude, there was a couple of references. They, they, yeah. They, they, they referenced uh, Jersey Shore. Did they? The, the guy, the gene with the duck phone. Is that I dude? Why would he have a duck phone? Is that is, that's, that's a from, Jersey Shore? I, I don't thing? know if it's I don't know if they took it from Jersey Shore, but Jersey Shore. I'm a big Jersey Shore fan, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jersey Shore, but in the first like several seasons of Jersey Shore, their main telephone landline was the duck phone, the same yeah. phone, and it's part of the the culture of that show is Good the name. duck phone. So when I saw the duck phone, I was like, "Fuck yeah, the duck phone! Let's go!" And it quacks when it rings. That's fucking so funny. dumb. Maybe. Uh... I see him even carrying it like the guy, the, like Pauly D in Jersey Shore. He's holding the base and he has the duck phone over here. Maybe, maybe Jennifer Reed is from New Jersey. Maybe she's mm-hmm. a maybe she's maybe. a shore girl. I don't know. A shore. Th- th- this was filmed in the states and in France, though. But so I don't know. Really? Yeah, it's in France on the on the thing. Huh. Uh, but yeah, and what what other scenes that I like? Maybe I, it was just the effects were done. But like, did they say filmed in location in France or just there was no? A I, I just saw on Wikipedia it said U.S. and France. They might have just sent it out to the effects thing. Maybe it's possibly. Uh, and there was a couple other scenes I liked, like um, the one where she finds her dad on the floor in the bathroom, just like yeah, kind of head head beat up a bit, and she's yeah. like knocked out, and you know presumably he's dead, right? Yeah, I thought he died, but then she comes in and she's like acting like he. I thought it was so. The, this is where the dialogue was super bad. Oh, that was yeah. That scene is seems terrible horrible. The dog. Yeah, uh, but oh, the cat. Uh, the the scene's so bad, but she's talking to him. I'm like, I'm like, call the fucking ambulance. Like, what, what are you doing, just sitting there, like yeah. you know? And she's stroking her dad's head, and she's like rambling this fucking nonsense. And the dad just gets like, he's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I thought that was funny, you yeah. know, where he's just like, shut up, because the, the dialogue was so bad. Another funny scene I liked was when she first gets to the high school, she's looking at, like, the yoga class or yeah, whatever like, this dance, the dance class. Yeah. And she's just looking in and the boy, Kirk, is going over. He's like, yeah, I'm into that uh, blonde chick. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Aviva. Aviva. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm really, but I'm trying to ask her out, blah, blah, blah. Like, he's, like, rambling about, like, how he's going to get her or whatever. And she looks at him and she says, ew, and just slaps his basketball yeah, down, <laughs> slaps his books down. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. Um, but 
that and the secretary, I think, are the only scenes in the movie I liked. Other than that, it was kind of like... There's no, no redemption in this whole movie. No redemption. No. Maybe if, like, the final scene, like, where they're eating cake was really, like, something different, I might have liked it a bit more, but... I, I think it's... I think it's... It's bad enough front to back that there was no redeeming that. I'm just thinking. So, I have a... It had this quality that I don't know how else to describe other than Canadian. Oh, it felt... Yeah, it, fair, yeah. it felt very Brandon Cronenberg. But it bad. A little, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. You mean. The, you it, know what I mean? It had, yeah. like, when you, whenever you watch, like, Canadian films, like, yeah. not, like, famous... Like, not Dennis You, you mean, like, the, or, the color and the, the, yeah. the outdoors and stuff like that. Aesthetically, yeah. and, like, even sound-wise, it felt yeah. very... Canadian. I thought I thought it was a Canadian movie. Me too. Until Halfway I, until through, I had to thought... Google it because I was like, "This feels so well, fucking Canadian." The budget too, I think. Is that all that budget. is? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, but I mean, like, what is it about yeah. Canadian movies that have that quality? I know exactly what you mean, though. Um, With fast Brandon Cronenberg, because even when Brandon Cronenberg goes to the UK and does something like Possessor, yeah, has that same kind of quality. That gray oh, kind of Possessor didn't have it. No, I Possessor, found. I don't feel like it. But it, like, it did in the few moments where she, she was the main character. Possessor was outside in like the town mm-hmm. of like where like those row houses there. Yeah, it was kind of like this gray toned yeah. urban setting. Like you know, even yeah, like Letter Kenny. Yeah, exactly. Has yeah. that has it, there's something well, about it, it feels that you like can, a play film. Yeah, yeah. or like uh, Todd in the Book of Pure Evil. Okay, yeah, yeah. Watch that. I don't know. I don't remember that show. I like I don't know I don't know that many Canadian TV or movies, but there's mm-hmm. something about it aesthetically yeah. that the second you see a Canadian product, you're like, oh, that's Canadian. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like an aura around it, yeah, but this felt that. the mix of the this, acting, the yeah. mix of the budget. Shout shout out to Carlos and Sugar from YTV. Hey, that's a throwback. Yeah, let's go. YTV game. The zone. Yeah, so it I, I I felt that. Yeah, which turned me off instantly. It's fair though. It's fair. It's like a CBC. But it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. Canadian though. No. no. So no. I want to know what what the thing is. You know. Yeah, me too. Maybe but it was also like I also felt like it was like the um, the the, yeah. the location pacing mm-hmm. felt very Cronenberg. Well, I thought that pacing was so fucked up in this movie. Yeah. Well, I thought it was way off. Yeah. Nothing fucking worked together. There was no rhythm to any scene. The dialogue no. was terrible. So yeah. everything kind of felt off mm-hmm. after. Camera movement was non-existent yeah and i don't know like this plot with the dad and the mom and the mom hiding from her but they she doesn't like the dad and the dad's a piece of shit apparently the dad yeah. didn't seem like he seemed like a, just a normal it's kind of poor yeah. deadbeat kind of dad no, but like kind of nice that is the mom yeah that's the mom Oh, that was the mom. Yeah, the, the mom's. The she dad. changed faces. Yeah. Oh, she was the dad the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Her real dad. She doesn't. Her real dad was the principal of the school. Oh no! I I figured that was the real dad, but I thought they like transformed. They yeah they did. Like like no but I thought like, the the dad in the beginning was the same oh, person. Oh no! So the dad becomes the mom, mm-hmm. and the biological father, became the principal years ago behind the scenes. Okay, okay, I see. I see. Yeah. I see. So the father with the duck phone? Yeah. That's the mom. That's the mom. Okay. That's the mom. She yeah. she assumed the role of a single father to hide from the principal. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Because I see. he was an abusive husband. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. yeah. See, the movie is so bad, I didn't even realize. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, those aren't, like, in your face points. It's no. like one line. Yeah. Where she, yeah, it's like one line. It's one scene where they explain it, and it's like, this girl... I mean, it's so who has spent it. eighteen it's so years not seeing her mother ever, is introduced to her mother, mm-hmm. and she like doesn't even react. Yeah, she's like, okay, and then the mom explains everything. She's like, okay, that yeah, makes sense to me. Yeah, got it. And even then, they're like, the dad is supposed to be such like a piece of shit, this fucking derelict guy. He seems like a pretty nice house. He just seems like a normal guy. Yeah, he just seems like, like a, a guy that's struggling, you know, yeah. or whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, but, not, it didn't even seem like he was doing too bad. Just no, he's like, you know, fixing his little knickknacks. Well, yeah, he like a normal I dude. mean, his daughter had to pay the rent. That's kind of... That, that yeah, but it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean you're a piece of shit, mm-hmm. uh, deadbeat, you know? It just means yeah. you're yeah. struggling, you know? But my thing is, too, is that they never explain why. Mm-hmm. Like, she's like, oh, I had to I, I, I had to assume the role of a single white dude because your dad was... Lo- your real dad was looking for a single black mom, so I decided to be a single white dad. Yeah. But it's like, so would that mean you couldn't go to work? Yeah, I'm sure. That doesn't explain why. Also, well, why are you sending her to the high school where her fucking real dad's the principal? Well, I don't think she knew. Mm-hmm. 
Because you just sent it to the ant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Then the ant sent to that school, so that's where they went. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, that's a pretty preppy school, you know? Yeah, none of it makes I mean, none of it none makes of sense. sense. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. sure. Okay, let's say, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. <sighs> you're, you're a young girl. Your mother mm-hmm. hates the husband because the husband is abusive. Mm-hmm. So your mother takes you and runs away. Your mother turns into a white father. Yeah. But then, why did she neglect, why did, where, why was there neglect in that relationship? Why was there poverty? Yeah, what was the thing? She says a line at one point where she's like, oh, the the being in a different body was too much for me. I just had to black out all the time. Oh, that was? So I assume that's why she couldn't work or do stuff. But then she also said she liked it. Yeah, that's well, why she stayed that way for so long. Cause was, she liked it. Dude, those were going like, oh, being a white guy was so easy. Being a white guy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But then like it's easy to get fucked up and just chill yeah. or something. I mean, don't know. It is. It's pretty nice. I mean, it's sorry. Uh, it's just <laughs> chilling over here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know this fucking movie. I don't know why you recommended it because I'm the fucking. Dude, I, I keep hearing about it, dude. I thought it was gonna be good. Dude, we kept hearing about Pandemonium at the fucking Fantasia, and that sucked even more. Sometimes you gotta take a chance, man. Actually, you know? Pandemonium had some. <laughs> <laughs> like, but when someone, when someone, best. dude, like, like I love Fantasia, but when someone, you have to understand when it's at Concordia, so you know that everyone's gonna be all nice and prissy about their fucking criticisms of whatever art piece or whatever movie, right? Two, it's at Fantasia, so all everyone's like circle jerking like they're bad movies, whatever. And there's some, like, bro, the best fucking movie on Fantasia was made by this fucking student in Hong Kong. Yeah, okay? that's true. That, and like, they're doing all this advertising for all these other fucking movies. One of them was, like, what was the other one? Uh, the Lives one? The Lives one? Afterlife? It was it called Afterlife? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That was, like, an okay movie. Like, I could see how someone could like that movie and enjoy it a lot. Yeah. It's but, very... You know, but, you know, Pandemonium kind of sucked outside of the fucking... The little bits there that we liked about Pandemonium, like the beginning and the end specifically. Pandemonium was better than this. Why is it Pandemonium getting hyped? Pandemonium sucked. This sucked <laughs> more, dude. This sucked more, but Pandemonium was good because of that beginning. Yeah. That beginning dialogue between the two characters where they're on the fucking highway. That was really good, yeah. That was hilarious. That yeah, was awesome. That's true. And the ending where he gets like reamed by this fucking uh, yeah. butcher, hell butcher. That was good. Everything in between that ten minute bit and the, the two minute bit at the end, fucking sucked, dog shit. And uh, you know that movie too got a lot of fucking like, like everyone at Fantasia was like, oh, Pandemonium. Like everyone's talking about Pandemonium. It sucked. No one's talking about the Moon Sky and you. Mm-hmm. You know. So anyone someone's talking about a movie at Fantasia, take it, I'm taking out a grain of salt. Bro. Yeah, I like too that this movie is an hour forty one minutes. Like this could for sure be like forty five minutes. Oh, oh yeah. God, yeah, for sure, Absolutely. for sure. Cut thirds out of the movie tons, of, tons of stuff of nothing all the yeah. shots of her stealing yeah. things or conversations went nowhere like one, 15 minutes of conversation I didn't get the punishment too she's like oh I found your things the the aunt was like I found all your shit and she's like why are you going through my shit and she's like eat one yeah, yeah. and I'm like what the fuck and she just eats the lipstick just like the whole well, thing you know when your dad catches you smoking cigarettes and makes you eat a whole pack of cigarettes yeah exactly like, what the <laughs> fuck you stole a dildo from a girl's locker? Eat it. Eat the whole dildo. <laughs> Who do you know stole a dildo from a girl's locker? In the movie. Oh, fuck. I was One of the things was a, like a vibrating butt plug or something. Oh, like was that. it? Yeah. Oh, I just saw like earrings and rings and stuff like that. Well, there, there was definitely a sex toy in there. Oh, really? Okay. That's yeah. probably an inside joke. Or I noticed it especially because when, it was, when she stole it from the locker, I was like, that's funny. And then when it was on the table later and the ants was presenting all the stolen items. And acting like it's normal. <laughs> Not only acting that it's normal, but it was like covered in hair and dust. <laughs> it looked so fucking gross. That's probably the best part of the movie. What the, the hairy dildo. the hairy dildo? The hairy yeah. dildo, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That's that's all I have to say about the movie. Yeah, it's a bad movie. Just, uh, yeah. Just yeah, I didn't have much. I mean, the the yeah. So I mean, yeah. Uh, I, everything's so obvious. Mm-hmm. I mean, my only note on like camera here is that. Uh, when fucking Alicia Silverstone's fingering the birthday cake yeah. at the end of the, the scene where she doesn't eat it, the camera's like on autofocus and it like shifts between her knuckle and then back to the hole. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't even notice the That's only on something autofocus. Nick would notice, yeah. though. Well, that's like a tight shot and she goes to finger it and then the focus is on her knuckle and then she moves and it cuts back. So oh, it's not the camera know. guy doing yeah. it, so. Yeah. It's just an autofocus thing. And then I thought the intro credits were like maybe 
that 20 years ago would have been cool, you know? Mm. It reminded me of fucking, uh, I wrote American Horror Story in here. Mm. It seemed like those kind of like, oh, this is like a oh, scary sure. yeah, intro. Yeah. Close-ups of a tube or something. Yes, yeah, I know what like, you mean. Like, okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not very contemporary. But like a Netflix show. Yeah, credits. not yeah. very, you know, could have been better. And then that fucking dip to negative at the beginning of the yes. credits. That was weird. So rough. Yeah, that's yeah. like so old school to do that. Yeah. yeah that was uh, pretty bad. And that, that's not, even, even the, I don't know if it's the same thing you're talking about, but even the, uh, like when the girl who's about to get kidnapped turns around and recognizes the person kidnapping her. Mm-hmm. And then she gets like blasted by this giant flash. Yeah. Even that was like. Yeah. Whoa. It made sense in the end because we find out the cop is involved in the kidnappings. Mm-hmm. But it looked terrible. They could have made it look cool. Yeah. Another great scene that I kind of liked was when they're doing the, um, the lockdown in the high school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was pretty. I kind of. I, I thought it was very weird. Yeah. But even I that, liked it. The thing it is, even that dude, it's like goofy though. I thought. There's there's there, there's an active shooter drill in the high school, so all the girls hide under a desk, and like instead of doing something interesting with the camera, they it's like the cameraman was just standing there filming. Yeah. yeah. Every scene, it's like the cameraman yeah. was just standing. He he never crouched. He never leaned. Oh, he never no, did anything. Yeah, yeah. It's just some dude no, standing no, there. The no, no interesting time. shots. No interesting yeah. camera movement. Yeah. It's like your 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 characters, your subject is below a desk and the dude's just standing. It's like that's not. <laughs> yeah. You know. And what what kind of fucking drill was that? Like, there's a guy going around school with like a water gun. That was a good meme though. He's got the active shooter is the principal. He's got a water gun filled with water and red food coloring so it looks like blood yeah mm-hmm. and like but like you know they're doing active shoot drill and i don't know why they died like what's their protocol they didn't hide well enough i guess i guess so because the, 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 the principal comes in and like shoots him with the water yeah like, ah, you guys all died did he open the door or did, was, did they door just was leave open. the door i they think the door, the door was door open, open yeah that's mistake number one i guess because yeah. in open. high school when i went when i was high school our drill was to not hide under the desk what we did is that there's the door there's the door of the room obviously it's closed and like covered but then you 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 would you would you would lie you would like sit down and huddle against the same wall of the door. Mm-hmm. So if he's like peeking through the door, he, it's like harder to see you because you're like right on the left of it kind mm-hmm. of thing. I did an active shooter drill in high school once. Mm-hmm. It was not an official active shooter drill for whatever reason. Our English teacher, do you remember that? No, I don't remember. Sec four English. English teacher. Well, I don't want to tell you. I'll tell you later. Okay. Um, what did it rhyme with? <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, they decided. Let's try an active shooter. You might not have been there, dude, honestly. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just closed the door and piled every single desk in that room behind the door. Really? So that it couldn't open. Oh. And the teacher was like, that's a good idea, guys. <laughs> so we're like, yeah, I, no, because now we can't escape either. Like, I don't know. I don't know what, there, were, there was no official protocol. It was yeah. literally just impromptu. For whatever reason, just my English teacher was like, <laughs> no, no, let's do a drill. Push the bookcase over there. Move I guess my they, desk yeah. there. You know, I went to high school in the fucking hood. So, like, there's, there's, we did active shooter drills a lot. Yeah, no. And we actually had... It wasn't an active shooter. But there was a guy that came through to school with a gun. And, mm-hmm. and we had to do a drill. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, there was... You can do that. Yeah, but there was guns in the school. No, even if we didn't do fucking drills with those. Yeah, we had, some uh, of the gang members had guns and shit like that. I was going back. So... <laughs> <laughs> in the backyard <laughs> not bothered yeah. but yeah that was a weird like I thought it was interesting like I like the, the the get up like I think if they did more of that active shooter thing that mm. would have been cool but like yeah I don't know like what I found frustrating was that conceptually I liked it yeah it's just horribly it's a done. good concept mm-hmm. it's an interesting metaphor for sexual assault and you know it like yeah. it's very uh it's very good conceptually, but it was just so poorly executed. Oh yeah, horribly executed. In in every the the idea is there. It's yeah. just nothing's done with it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, and the whole plastic surgery thing, I feel like so underdeveloped. It's not crimes of the future over here. You know, she, she probably had like that idea mm-hmm. and like didn't feel like making another short, so she's like, I'll just toss it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything is tossed. In yeah, second, really. Yeah, I heard a lot. Of, so I I have a um question for you guys because I, I heard a lot of people saying that uh people about this movie specifically and about a lot of movies i i, I keep hearing this um whenever someone's like it was it was bad and someone's like no i liked it you just don't get it it's camp okay it's not a campy movie it's not even camp yeah i don't think it's camp 
whatsoever. No. no. But I, I, I wanted to get what you guys think is camp. I mean, campy for me, I'm picturing like fucking, um, uh, like Slumber camp? Party Massacre. That yeah. Was, that was my go-to. Yeah, that's camp. Yeah. The Massacre 2, two especially, two, especially, two is especially. Like, funny, though. That's just straight it's camp. Funny. Yeah. Straight to me, camp. that's that's like yeah. the epitome of like camp. Like a John Waters movie. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, ba- Basket Case kind of campy. Have you guys seen yeah. But I'm a Cheerleader with Natasha Leone? It sounds kind of like That's that. very campy. Yeah. I mean, Hansel yeah. and Greta get, pay- get baked. I like that movie. I mean, it's kind of campy. Yeah. Kind of campy. Yeah. There's definitely drama. Yeah. So... Most Shutter movies are pretty campy, but a good way. Define campness. Um, I'd say it's uh, it low budget, but self aware of the budget okay. and yeah. playing into that budget, okay. working within the restraints of the genre to like not not taking itself too gears. seriously, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. And like it knows it's a genre movie, and it's going full into the genre as yeah. far as you can go within the budget. While being aware of the budget, yeah. So can, can like so can you have a high budget or large budget camp movie? I think it ruins it. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I, well, I don't think it's well. It's like the same thing if you have like, I don't know, if it's a black metal or something, and you're like, oh, yeah, you, know, you can't have it in the studio all done up, or it's not it's black metal. Essence, you you could do you know? black metal in the studio. No, but it doesn't have the essence of it. Yeah, you know? you, you need that lo-fi quality of black metal. Yeah, okay. it's the same thing yeah, with yeah. a camp movie. You need to have the low budget. You need to okay. have. Your buddies in it. You need to have mm. it's teenagers getting killed. It has to be paid for through pizza. Right. Shout out pizza. Um. Okay. Yeah. I was just. That's what I, I think. Just, I just, yeah. Yeah. But, I think yeah. So I think Slumber Party Massacre is like the ultimate cat movie. I agree. Yeah. Some, that was my that was my mm-hmm. first thought. Yeah. It also gets I, you good though. It has to be fun. Yeah. Like well, fun. I think I think what makes what I think what makes good camp mm-hmm. is being very sincere. About all the wrong things and mm-hmm. being very in like in terms of a genre, like if you're gonna do a, a camp horror thing, mm-hmm. then you take all of the horror stuff and you do it very insincerely, okay. and then you take all the goofy stuff about horror and you do that very sincerely. Okay, so yeah. like that's what makes yeah. camp is to take mm-hmm. all the things that are supposed to be dealt with in a sincere mm-hmm. manner and make fun of it, yeah. and then everything that's just like stupid and goofy, you take that way too seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like that's a good way yeah. to, to make. Like camp. I felt like I felt like Perpetrator wasn't campy at all. No. But all the scenes that you liked were campy. Are the closest thing this movie gets to camp? I think. Oh, like yeah. That school shooter scene that felt campy. That's the closest that movie got to camp. I felt. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Even and the the plastic surgery B plot like there's a lot of yeah. jokes and gags in that that felt campy. Yeah. yeah. But to call the whole movie campy to me is a cop out because it's not. It's not. No. No. Yeah. You like for me for a movie to be campy you have to kind of laugh at it a mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. Yes, be yes, be yes, be like no, you can't take it seriously, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, it camp isn't comic relief. No, no. the whole thing is camp. Yeah, or yeah. it's not. Well, I yeah. think right? camp is it's also like something you have to achieve to get it. It's not like okay, I'm making a comedy movie. There's jokes in the whole movie. Yeah. No, it's not a genre. Itself. No, no, the the, the, the jokes in a campy the campy horror movie yeah. has to be like by accident almost. Yeah, or something. It's not even jokes. Happens. It's like it's like you're just like seeing it, and you're like mm-hmm. you're just laughing at it because like it's so ridiculous. Yeah, you know? but like We're camp so itself isn't the genre. No, right. it's a campy horror. Yes, a campy yeah. comedy. Yeah, it's a motif. Yeah, it's something, yeah, something attached to a genre. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think of other really campy. I think I think Evil Dead's campy. I was gonna say that too. Yeah. Cabin in the Woods to me is campy as well. Army of Darkness is campy as shit. Oh, that's yeah. a good yeah. one. That's okay. a classic. Yeah. yeah, Army of Darkness is a good one for sure. That's yeah. camp. I love Army of Darkness. I think the Creep Show. Mm-hmm. That, yep. Those are usually yep, pretty definitely. campy. Mm-hmm. Basket case, bad biology. Yeah. Are those not camp? I don't know if bad biology is campy. That's like that's like a whole other thing. Yeah. Actually, no, I don't know. I think it would be though with the I vagina. Think so too. Yeah, and I think that's pretty yeah, campy. Yeah. And like, uh, what else did? Uh, Basket Frank, case. Frank and yeah, Frankenhooker. Frank <laughs> I feel like that's camp. That's we got we got to do Frankenhooker. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were promoting that on Criterion before. Oh yeah, they're, saying, they're posting something about oh it's Halloween uh, Frankenhooker or something nice. like a meme. Kind yeah, of meme. yeah, I feel like Oppenheimer is pretty campy. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny, dude. If if Christopher Nolan directed a camp biopic of <laughs> yeah. fucking Oppenheimer, <laughs> my god. Yeah, that'd be bad. What else is campy? Uh, Juan of the Dead, very campy. I don't think I've seen that. It's like it's but, a parody but, of Shaun of the Dead, which is a parody of Shaun of the Dead. So our parodies camp. Or no, not all of them, but I like yeah. it's it's specific horror movies that I, I find very campy. Yeah. Like Juan of the Dead, 
or um, like just dumb horror movies. Mm. I just love them. I just fucking love them. Like the, Have you guys seen Jawbreaker? No, but I heard of it. I feel like that. I haven't seen it either, but I feel like that might be a kind of campy thing. Maybe, maybe. Rocky Horror Picture Show. For sure. For sure, campy. Yeah, for right. sure. That's up there. That's, that's got to be. Yeah, yeah. that's got to be. Yeah. yeah. Definitely can't be. Yeah. And the thing too, like all the movies we're naming, they're good. Yeah, they're all good movies. Yeah, they're well, fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's the thing because I hear a lot of people. I, I feel like can't. I can't. They're good if you don't take it super seriously. You know. Yeah, but even then, if you take the Rocky Horror Picture Show pretty seriously, it's like it's a good movie. Sing along. But I mean, if you take Summer Party Massacre yeah, seriously, it's like okay, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, taking it seriously, I think you'll be sitting with your buddies and laughing at it. Yeah, right. be going like that's what I mean. He's got a guitar yeah. with a bazooka or whatever. He's got, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Got a, dr- a drill yeah. guitar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, God, that movie's really so fun. Oh, I love Summer Party Massacre. Summer Party Massacre. Oh, what are they? The fucking uh... just the name Summer Party Massacre. So just the, the the penultimate camp uh, horror movies, or the like the Toxic Avenger and all those movies. Oh yeah, sure. Fuck yeah, I've never yeah. seen them, but yeah. Talk, uh, fuck, what's it called? Or like all all the all like Trauma. the. Trauma films, those are peak fucking. Not familiar. Not familiar either. But like I like also all like the 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 the, the really like explicitly dumb horror movies like, the um, the shark versus. Oh, all the shark exploitation stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Octo shark, Dracula shark. <laughs> is it zombie shark? It's or not called Dracula. It's like Sharkula or something. Or like Piranha that. versus shark or some yeah, dumb yeah, shit yeah. like that. Like, uh, Shudder actually has a really good documentary on shark exploitation. It's really funny. Like, oh, like heavy metal kind of thing? Yeah, like these kind I of thought, movies, I love yeah. heavy metal. Tromeo and Juliet. <laughs> like, this is top, yeah. top tier camp. The Leprechaun series? Well, that's called? kind of a camp, This is right? like Troma is the production Troma company. Troma Entertainment, okay. Yeah. And they make just about the most stupid. The Leprechaun series? Okay, Leprechaun yeah. for sure. Yeah, those guys, those guys. For are sure. Yeah. So that's, what, that's the thing. A lot of people say mm-hmm. camp is easy to, easy to notice, easy to spot, mm-hmm. very hard to define. I think we just defined it perfectly. I don't I know. Think we did. I, think we I think for sure it's not camp. I think it's just a bad movie. Because yeah. the thing is, I think a lot of nor- normal fucking people, especially like Letterbox wizards, they'll call anything that's bad horror campy. Yeah. But like campy can be good. Mm-hmm. You can have good movies that are campy. Yeah, like campy doesn't mean cheesy. Does it? It could be cheesy, but it's like self-aware yeah. cheese. Almost. But yeah, but cheese I would think is negative, and like camp I would think is fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like fu- it's funny and fun and like mm. you can't take it seriously. Yeah. Like um, rom coms fall mm. victim to cheese very easily. Yeah. But a rom com like they it's came okay. together. Those aren't campy. Have you seen they came together? No. That's a very campy rom com. Oh, is it? Okay. It's fucking funny. Okay. It's with uh, Paul Rudd and uh, Amy Amy Poehler. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Parks and Rec. Yeah. yeah. And that's a that's that's like a, it's like a parody of a. Of a rom com, but it's okay. I th- I think it's more camp than parody. Okay. Very funny. I haven't watched it. So. It's funny. I think it's on Netflix. At least here in in, uh, in the Great North. Great North of fucking Loatia. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you guys want to do Letterbox? Yeah. Well, so, do do we have a favorite shot? I have one. Yeah, I picked yeah. one. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, what up, you guys? It's when she's about to get her blood drained. By her father, and it's a close-up of her Johnny. Is her name the main character? Yeah, Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. It's a close-up of John or a head and shoulder shot of Johnny, and she's in blue. The background is orange. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with a wide angle, you can do it now. Hey, oh, oh, hey, oh. Whoa. Okay. Here, move. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I don't. I don't fucking have a favorite shot. Uh-huh. Um. Like no shot stood out to me where I was like I like where I was like oh shit nice shot, not a single one, maybe that one but I I didn't fucking notice that one. Um, you, do you have one? So there's a lot of things I liked. There's a there's a, there was a, there were a lot of opportunities where I was like oh that could have been a really cool shot. Okay, okay. But it never really was. Okay. Yeah. Mostly it, the one that stood out to me the most was the the Friday the Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Reference. Reference with the bloody bed. They could have done something really cool with that. Yeah. And it was just kind of like just your, your standard fucking, okay, let's just put the camera there so everything's in frame and just fucking whatever. Actually, I guess my favorite shot would be when, uh, in the beginning, when Gene and Johnny are sitting watching a movie after they've yeah. ordered pizza and both their noses start bleeding and they both oh, swipe yeah. it at the same time. Yeah. That's probably my favorite shot. Mm-hmm. Like you said, though, Leah, it, it, it has like the 
opportunity to be cool and like you think it could be cool yeah and it always just shits the bed yeah like in the scene where all the girls are hiding under the bed all the kidnapped girls yeah. are hiding under the bed and then the buddies in massacre the room. level bloodbath yeah exactly and then right before that the guy's in the room like hyping himself up yeah and you're like oh it could be cool he's like going mad and then he, he goes uh i'd fuck me i'd fuck <laughs> yeah. me yeah. and you're like you're just doing a bit you're doing like a reference bit yeah like, yeah i don't yeah, know and the same thing too it's just a camera Okay, yeah. there's the stairs and he's standing there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, They could have done something super freaky. Anything. Even with all the girls under the bed, they could have yeah. done a cool, like, wide shot where like, you just barely see no them. One, no one was trying to flex artistically in this movie. No. There's no style at no. all in the movie. I mean, if I had to pick, it's it's literally the letterboxed wallpaper. It's just the kaleidoscope shot. That would be cool. Of her, like, freaking out, bleeding maniac style. Yeah. Even, that shot's cool. Completely out of character, completely out of place there, yeah. I found. And then three shots back-to-back of kaleidoscope. And then yeah, exactly. Again. And then, like, she's doing this whole freak-out thing, going absolutely insane. She looks like she's turning into a fucking monster. And the next scene, she's like, what, going to school and everything's normal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so that, that, if I had to pick one, and not just one that I imagined being better, mm-hmm. it'd be that. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is also very campy. I think that's top camp. Yeah. There you go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's check out some letterbox reviews. There's some. There's, there's people some, actually like the. the there's movie? some good ones. So I a lot of the a lot of the people liking the movie I was noticing were a lot of people just just being happy to see Alicia Silverstone on on the screen. Yeah. And I was like, okay. All right, I got a review here. Yeah. It's by a uh, someone named Orla. Let's check out what what's what's Orla's favorite movies. Orla's favorite movies are Suspiria. Which one? <laughs> Remake? Uh, no, original. Uh, I think it's original. Yeah. Um, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. So good. Titan and so Princess so Mononoke. Good. good list of movies. Those two middle ones, especially. Yeah, big time. Actually, all four are bangers. All, all four are bangers. Um, and she wrote, Watching all the men in their reviews pissing and shitting themselves is hilarious. This is literally just the average teenage girl experience. Yeah, so... Interesting. Yes, that was the point of the movie, and I get that. But that doesn't make it a good movie. No, mm-hmm. it doesn't. Right? But like I mean, like you know, body. also we aren't women, so maybe if like if you're a woman and you watch it, you're like, oh my god, that's amazing. We can't, we can't, we can't, we're all dudes. We can't, we can't, I don't know. we can't, we can't review a movie from the perspective of a woman, so we don't know. But like based on what we were saying before, it's like, like they don't do much with it. It's not that doesn't make it a good movie. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. T- they're trying to go for that theme. What she said is the theme of the movie. But there's nothing really to, you know, accentuate that yeah. theme, you know? Is, That's the a, only thing I did like about the movie. Yeah, the concept. It was conceptually good, but yeah, it, yeah. it was, like, the ideas there, but they don't do anything with it. And they, they have, like, these little threads that go out for the concept, and they don't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And there's, like, all this, like, plot weird, weirdness and the dialogue shit yeah. and all that but stuff. But even there. then, like, if you're grading a piece and the concept is good, there's still ten other categories yeah there's 10 other criteria you can judge yeah well what she how many stars was that a five star five star yeah. oh that was a five star, that was five star. Yeah. you go oh the concept's good but plot was shit acting was shit screen rip fucking right yeah. shit, shit camera movement shit, shit. You get lighting everything shit. i have another five star but before you read that yeah, one, i will i will admit there are i was scrounging through some reviews there are a lot of dudes being like why are all the men in this movie assholes okay. it's like all right buddy what movie did you watch like it's it's pretty obvious why yeah and it's not you know, don't take it personally, buddy. Just you know. Even then, the main the main dude is Kirk, which is like the boy in the high school that like wants to get in the pants of all the girls, and he's not that bad, especially after you like once you progress the plot with him a bit more. Yeah. He's just like you know this like you know soy boy. Do you yeah. think he's involved? No, I don't think so. I don't do you think, think so. Do you think it's just the dad who's targeting yeah. his lays? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. No, sorry, not to objectify his lays, but <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah. I watched it with fucking Christina and like. 15 minutes into the movie, she's like, oh, I bet it's the cop that's doing it. Yeah. It's not the only thing. There's no problem. Dude. <laughs> yeah. They, they kind of give up on the mystery, too, at the end. And yeah. you just, everyone knows that it's the principal. I mean, the second... Just assumes. The second, I... The, the first time the principal ever speaks in this movie, mm-hmm. he's, like, telling the girls, like, the most backwards fucking self-defense mm-hmm. shit in the world. Yeah. He's like, don't cry. If you cry, you'll turn them on. Like, okay, how would you know that? Yeah. And he's like, curl up in the ball and don't move. That's the best thing to do. It's like, okay, so he's the kidnapper for sure. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else we got here? We have another five-star by Flew in the Wind. Mm. Let's see, what's their favorite movies? 
Favorite movies are Dope, Grease, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and Wizard of Oz. Which Dope? Show me the cover. That Dope. 2015. Uh, okay, that sounds just a little dumb. That sounds like Scott Pilgrim. Oh. She wrote it. Reminded me of my period. I loved it. Five stars. There you go. Okay, whatever. I saw, I saw one review. It was like, I don't know if I can find it or not, but it was like, uh, for, for added uh, immersion, watch this during your time of the month. And I no, thought that was funny. Just get angry That's at the movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> this movie sucks even more. <laughs> well, last five star I'm going to I'm gonna talk about. Bill, a guy named Bill Arsenault. His favorite movies are Bloody Nose, Empty Rocket. Okay. What? what? No, what? No, wait, Siri, you fuck off. My, uh, um, Buster Keaton, uh, home, home Portable House Company, Buster Keaton. I don't know. Sure. Buster Keaton. No, it's what? One Week. It's called movies called One Week. Um, time code and out of the blue. I've never heard of any of those. He has he has a pro membership too. Okay. Uh, independent film critic. Okay, whatever. He's his the guy. That's a, anyone yeah. with a letterbox. Can normal help. dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a member of Sefka or whatever. I was, uh, he has a like website. I don't know. Uh, anyways, th- those movies are like whatever. That's like some real yeah. weird movies tied to your favorite. Like, but he has like an okay. Like he has like kind of like lengthy reviewed and just like oh period. Okay. He wrote, nobody's making films like Jennifer's Re- like Jennifer Reed is. Nobody. Big swings, bloody tension, Lynchian, David and and Jennifer Chambers vibes, and the pains of growing into female maturity makes up this starting body startling body horror that reminded me of an inverse of inverse of fast color. Multiple views might be necessary, as some information above and below the surface was too quick to grasp here and there. Still, the strangeness kept me hooked and tuned in. Super women as empathy, conduits, slash transmitters, tra- slash vampires, slash machines. Movies are like, are all like, wait, what? Movies are, are like all of, all of that too? If Ro- Robert Ebert was, is to be understood, well, I, I, I can't fucking read. <laughs> <laughs> if Robert Ebert is to be understood, Jennifer Reeder understands this, but expresses it so specifically and so spread out like a large, uncontrollable fire. Bet a best of twenty twenty three honorable mention for me. A sure thing favorite. Okay, uh, I, sorry, I can't read anymore. Uh, I studied art in school, so I can't read. Um, okay, dude. But yeah, no, like I, I, I agree with what he's saying. Not about the movie though. I, th- you know what I think? I think this guy just doesn't get any pussy. Yeah, he's white knighting it. And he's white knighting it, and yeah. he's like, "This movie is so good. I love this movie's great." <laughs> oh yes, women, oh. women are so empowered. Oh, oh I love the movie. God. Listen, I fuck with women empowerment hardcore. You know. He signs off the review with his phone number. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> but he's like, he's. I feel like he's one of those incel nice guys yeah. that's like, I can't you know, oh, this is, this is a movie here. about women and women empowerment. I'm gonna get a ten out of ten. Let's see. I want to see what he gave Barbie. Let's see. Where's yeah, yeah, Barbie? Here, wait. Well, you look. Here's a Fantasia number twenty five from Lynn Betts, Montreal, hashtag local. Oh, oh. favorite movies. Lady Hawk. Okay. Black yeah. Book. It's a Wonderful Life and Grand Hodge Day. That's all. Hmm. Which are whatever films I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she 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 formed a quiz. Oh. For her. Uh, she said if to find out if you would like this movie, give or, yourself give, if points for all of these yeah. things. Do you, do you not like watching movies? Do you have brain damage? <laughs> Are you doing something else while it's on? Four points if you like Twilight. Not sure where the connection is there. Not yeah. sure why. I mean, Twilight's pretty campy too, though. The first Twilight was very campy. Listen, I fuck with the first Twilight. It's not a good movie. It's campy. It's campy. Mm-hmm. It's by no means like a great movie. It's very funny. But it's kind of like, you was know. It intentionally campy, though? No. no. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Well, it has another maybe thing for campy. I think campy you have to watch in a group setting. Yeah. It has to be screened. Yeah, because watching like Twilight that. alone is not funny. It's sad. You yeah. watch Twilight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I get that. Okay, this guy gave Barbie five stars too. Okay, so. But, there you go. Plus four for The Witches? I don't know what movie that is. Oh, is that the fucking, um... Oh, what the fuck's that guy's name? The guy who does the movie about, like, the friendly giant and stuff, where he's an author with Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Our, the Iron Giant? No, Charlie and Chocolate Factory writer. Oh. Who was it? The guy who did uh, fucking Steven Spielberg. (laughs) Uh, Three points if you like Bones and All. Have you guys seen Bones and All? It's a fucking good movie. I haven't seen it. For our boy Timmy. Rolling Doll? 
rolled doll. Okay, I guess that works now. You having a stroke? <laughs> uh, <laughs> doll. Bones and all is the director who did Call Me By Your Name. Okay. It's with our boy Timmy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out Timmy. Timothée Chalamet. But it's, as a, he likes it's to a, a fucking cannibal movie. Oh, cool. It's mm-hmm. fucking cool. It's a really good movie. Oh, we should review it. I'm down, dude. It's a really good movie. Okay. Um, plus two points if you like the new crimes of the future. Uh, Give them 20, dude. <laughs> I love that I guess movie, there's a few. Dude. And then Antiviral and Possessor, too. So it's, oh, yeah. I think people are really leaning in, into this being a body horror movie. Uh, it's not a body horror at all. No. <laughs> it's a chop chop movie. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's I think it's a little. It's 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 touching it a bit, yeah. but it's it's not enough body horror to be considered yeah. body horror. I think I think implanting an anus on your heart isn't enough to make it body horror. No, and having a little blood here and there with yeah. those movies, no. Um, ultra campy Alicia Silverstone. Shut up. Her <laughs> her role is is. I don't think it. I, again, that I'm not sure. I can't tell if it was intentionally campy. I don't think it was. I don't think it was campy either. No. I think it was just a bad performance. Yeah. Um, Love, which is also a very campy movie. Yeah. yeah. That, that movie is mm-hmm. good. It's a good movie, though. Uh, captive Terror. Do you guys know? I think she just means as a theme. Captive Terror. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Ted Surrogate from How I Met Your Mother. I guess that's an no, uh, actor, actor. Is this a review just movie. naming off other movies? Yeah, points. Points. If you like this movie, points if you like this movie. And then if your score is between this and this, you'll like it. If your okay. score is between this. But I'm just so saying. I got two for Crimes of the Future. Yeah, plus two for Crimes of the Future. Okay. Plus four for Twilight. Are you... Are you uh, I'll give it half. Can you give half? No, I don't care, dude. Tw- oh, Twilight's a one. better movie than Crimes yeah, of the Future. And then sick. plus two for Antivirus. Do you like Antivirus? You didn't like Antivirus. I don't really like Antivirus. Plus two for Possessor that we like. Possessor, yeah. Possessor, Possessor was good. I'll give four points for Possessor. So you're at what? No. Ten. Ten. So ten to fifteen, You have. she has moderate confidence that you'll like the movie. Okay, I'll give it at least eight. Eight. She has some confidence that you're not the right audience. Give it she two. thinks she, she predicts you'll give, you're gonna give it two to three stars out of five. Well, you know what? She's right on. <laughs> <laughs> She's right on, dude. Really? Out of five? I think we're gonna see later. Yeah, I guess. Maybe so. Cars of the Future though. fucking sucked. The original is on Criterion Channel. No. I'm curious to see it. Okay, that's next week. I haven't yet. We'll but do a double curious. feature. Now. No, next week we gotta do Bones and All. Or oh, I thought we were doing the Travolta movie. Bones and All. Night Fever. No, I thought we were doing Godzilla next time. Hey, we got yeah. so, we got shit lined up, guys. It's so much yeah, good you know? stuff. Stay tuned. Also, if you have a movie you want us to review, let us know. Yeah, and if you're that guy, leave in comments. Suck a fucking egg, dude. Oh, here's a fun one. Suck an egg. <laughs> here's a fun one from Donnie Darko six six six. Nice. He's <laughs> an edgy guy, dude. <laughs> this guy's scary. Avant garde filmmaking on a tight budget with outstanding <laughs> visuals. Oh. And a great score. But oh. be warned, oh, sorry. this is not for the casual movie. Oh. <laughs> Bro, shut up. What's his name? Donnie Darko What's 666. Fair movies? What's the favorite movie? Donnie Darko. <laughs> Oppenheimer, <laughs> Donnie Darko, Mister- Mysterious Skin, and Burning. This guy stinks. Dude. This guy. a fucking good movie, though. Yeah, but this guy... Bro... <laughs> No, it's a hilarious Donnie movie, Darko dude. 666 is the best name we've <laughs> ever seen, dude. That really is the best. Avant-garde filmmaking, guys. Yeah, what? She used a color This film? is the next color of pomegranates over here, you know? <laughs> Call Werner Herzog, bro. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Um, Werner Herzog's getting his period, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all the dwarfs are running into town for the period blood, bro. Get the fuck out of here. That guy's wrong, okay? So here's one of the top one of the top half star reviews for this movie. Okay. Uh, as rated by your boy Lucas, who is a patron on Letterboxd. Favorite movies, Days of Heaven, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, mm-hmm. Napoleon, not the new one. Okay. And one from like nineteen seventeen? From nineteen twenty seven, yeah. This yeah. guy's lame, dude. And uh your name. The anime. What a fucking wizard. But he has some good movies. What was his other movie that was good? Uh, The Good, Bad, the Ugly? Or yeah, yeah, that's Days a good movie. Heaven. But even then, the that's like a film student going like, I'm, yeah. I'm cool. Hey, The Seven Seals not on it. I bet it, he reviewed it. For sure he reviewed he it. He gave Seven Seal a five stars? <laughs> yeah, so this for is sure. What, so this is what he said about Perpetrator. He says, absolute dog shit. Okay. Shockingly bad film. A surface level feminist coming of age horror exercise with nothing noteworthy in execution or performance. I was in constant disbelief at the muddy visuals, 
the shit sound mix, and the incoherent first draft screenplay. Finally. Dreadful filmmaking. Why the fuck is this at the Berlin Ale? So it, it would premiere at the Berlin Film Festival. Yeah. I mean, finally a comment from a man with a brain. <laughs> <laughs> now a pretty agreeable comment. It's agreeable, but uh, that, that's it. Sounded very like harsh. I I just came out of film studies. Kind yeah, of thing, I mean, you a little know? too harsh. But I mean, it's just a little like, too harsh there. Movie. It's not a good movie, but like that's a guy who would watch something like um, Basket Case and be like, "That movie sucks, bro." Yeah, so he's a fil- this... he's a film studies guy. Yeah, was this? Six six six. Donnie Darko. No, this is oh, Lucas. Okay. Lucas. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's Lucas's movie? It's the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Oh, that's this. Your oh, name. Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, 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 this, yeah. Is this guy. Yeah. Okay. Because this guy's a dork too, though. So you can't. He's a fucking dork. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he's he's rated a hundred and eight movies five stars. That's too much. Twelve Angry Men, nineteen seventeen, two thousand one, A Space Odyssey, eight and a half. After Sun, Alien, Aliens. Okay, this guy is just the lamest. Mode Barry Lyndon, Apocalypse Now. Come on. Oh, it's, it's literally the yeah, guy yeah. ever. Citizen Kane. Yeah, he just went through the list. Literally, yeah. Come on. That's that's the, this, that's a good meme though. That'd be so funny, dude. If it, we check the letterbox top one hundred movies, it's the exact same list. <laughs> I bet it is, dude. I mean, th- that's that's a guy who just graduated yeah, from eight and a half, two thousand one. What's what do you give the Seven <laughs> Seal? Like, I don't know how it's to, on there for sure. It's on there for sure. For sure, it's on there. It's on it's, there for sure. That's so funny. He, his list is sorted alphabetically. So that and like daisies. <laughs> yeah, daisies. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. What's of that? Battleship. Of the well, what do you give Cat? What, uh, if uh, wait, I got I got a chat on my inner Laz. What do you? What did he give Cat in the hat? He definitely. Oh, La Hain is in his top. Of course, bro. Of course it is, bro. It's a film studies character. Uh, Seven Seal is not here. Okay, well, well so that's it's on his list. He showed you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Worthy ass. Because he, here's the thing, here's the thing, Lee, Lee. I'm not sure if you know this, Nick. You definitely know this because you okay. went to film school. Yeah. There's a different, a big difference between the film studies kids mm-hmm. and the film production kids. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know exactly what you mean. They they understand. They look at movies and understand movies in a completely different way. Yeah. And they understand quality of movies in a completely other way, different yeah. way. Yeah. The film study kids are a lot more pretentious with it. And like, like they and they don't really know what they're talking about. They look at movies as like a piece of art, like I mean, as everyone does. Yeah. yeah. But they don't actually understand how the making of it works. Right. And how a quality of the movie should be judged. I feel they're just being pretentious philosophers about the movie. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Am I am I right or wrong? Hundred percent. hundred percent. Oh, battery exhausted. I mean, well, we're right. gonna switch that. We're gonna, yeah. Okay. Oh, we can hold on. I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I, yeah could, I could start charging it up. I mean, yeah, char- charge it up, charge it up. Well, I'll keep talking. I mean, yeah, I would use a different word to describe your, them, but we can't say it on what? YouTube. I need your wire, your extra long charger. Oh, wait, one second. It's attached to my computer. Actually, I'll get it. I'll get it for you. But yeah, no, you know what I mean, Nick? Well, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, Dante. That's, it, it's all about pretension, and uh, it's a word that starts with F and ends in T. I can't say it on the podcast, but, you know. F, F, F in what? T is the last letter. Okay, and and the thing is with film production, with film study students, like I have a friend, uh, that like you know she was a film studies kind of person, mm-hmm. and you know if you made her watch like the original Blade Runner, yeah, she's like oh whatever, you know it's just an action flick or whatever, okay, yeah. right, yeah, but it's a fucking good movie, you oh, know, yeah. but if you uh, but like like okay so the big comparison I had with her mm-hmm. was that the uh, John Wick, right? Mm-hmm. The first one. Okay. Amazing movie. Incredible. But the thing is, it's amazing for the way it's made. It's mm-hmm. not, like, amazing because the plot's artistic or, or or anything like that, you know? It's not amazing because of the, art, like, super artsy-fartsy choices that they did in the movie. John Wick's, a, like, one of the best action movies ever because of very specific film things. And it's very authentic and it's just well, well done, you know? So yeah, so the film the film studies kids they're gonna look at movies like this or movies like Love Witch or movies like fucking um, like uh, Basket Case and they're gonna take it super seriously, right? And 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 they won't they won't actually take the movie for what it is. Those are the kids who don't understand camp. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because they can't have fun. They're the ones mm-hmm. who use the word camp as like they'll write it in an essay. Yeah, 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 and it's like oh they're using the word camp, right, you know, right, kind right. of thing. But they don't fucking understand anything about movies, and they don't understand how like shots work and how like lighting and like colors they don't, they don't mm-hmm. see every frame they're just looking 
They're just like jerking off their own thoughts about this movie, you know? Yeah. What do you think but, about that? Yeah, them too. I don't. I don't really think it's like original opinions they're coming up with. I think it's just regurgitating other people's. That's yeah. what they heard in class. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why all their favorite movies are favorite are movies that everyone studies in film studies. Exactly. Yeah. Where you get the nut in yeah. your mouth and you spit the nut <laughs> on the paper. Yeah, but but here's the thing. Now, now <laughs> if you go if you go to the film production students, they're like they're like they're like they don't give a fuck about the Seven Seal, bro. Yeah. They they like they can appreciate what it did for the history of filmmaking and the shots. Yeah. But they're like making like the dumb like like one of the like yeah, there's their a favorite film. movie is the original Donkey Kong video game. Yeah, something <laughs> like that, you know? <laughs> or like um like there was this film production student a long, long time ago. I don't I never met the student, but I had, like his teacher was one of my teachers and like uh, the teacher would have like art pieces that the kids like his students gave him, right? After they, they left, whatever. Yeah. And what, like, I'll never forget, it's, I want, I've never been able to watch this movie, but I've always wanted to. It's been a long time, too. Um, and he told me that, like, one of his old students made a movie about, uh, these Girl Scout, like, Girl Scouts that would, like, go around the neighborhood and sell cookies and shit. That they, they were getting, like, assaulted, sexually assaulted by, like, this guy in the neighborhood. Or, like, some, some dude, right? Right. So what they ended up doing is all the girls started rallying up and they all got a bunch of guns. Started hunting down this dude. Sounds fire as fuck, okay? Yeah. But that's something a film stu- production student wouldn't make, but not a film study student. Right. A film study student would make something like very like, you know, uh, very fucking pretentious as shit. Like, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like when I was taking film studies classes, they were history classes. Yeah. They weren't right. film classes. They were going, oh, in... 1915, this was going on in European politics. So this guy made this movie that reflected the socio-economic situation of yeah. Azerbaijan or something. And you're going, who gives a fuck? The movie's about, like, to cut out, like, daisies or something. Yeah. Right, 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 right. You're going, okay, well, whatever. Like, I've taken my fair share of film studies classes, too, but it's like, you know, I did a class on, like, um, Iranian film, mm-hmm. you know? Why I learned about daisies and all these yeah. other fucking movies to show you. And they're good movies. Like, I like those movies. I like Les Cats Sans Coup. I like all the uh, Jean-Luc Godard movies and stuff like that. But, you know, it's like... To a point, but Godard is kind of fucking that too. Yeah, it, like, to a point. But it's like, it, like, it's like it's like talking about those movies and, like, it's just super, super pretentious. And it's like people that are really into those kinds of movies, mm-hmm. they just can't appreciate normal people movies. Yeah. Well, you can't get more pretentious than Godard, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, I like Godard movies, but, like, you know, they're fucking pretentious movies. You know? Yeah, so the dude. end of language and it's just like zapping <laughs> yeah. his phone or something going, dude. And and you know Did like he, the, he had he had a cell phone back then? This was a few years ago. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's still alive? Yeah. yeah. How old is he? That's pretty old. I think it's, it's pretty, it's Netflix, pretty fucking old. A few years ago. Oh really? Yeah. That's but like, they're the type of people that would scoff at Lord of the Rings or something like that. Dude, Lord of the Rings is a when, you, there's a debate to be made that the Lord of the Rings truly is like the greatest cinematic thing ever. Oh yeah. He died, died two years ago. Oh yeah, he died two years ago. R. I. P. G man doesn't uh, G-Man. doesn't Lord of the Rings still hold the record for the most amount of Oscars won in a single year? Yeah, who cares about the Oscars? This is mean anything. No, no, I'm just mm. saying. But it, pretentious Maybe. people do. Mm. Uh, not really. Not the I film mean, studies kids. Yeah, they'd be going like the Berlin Alley or some shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah, like oh Sundance sure. kind yeah, of thing, yeah. you know, or a TIFF or some shit like that. Can. Yeah. 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 But they they would scoff at like Lord of the Rings, but it's like bro, Lord of the Rings. Is arguably the greatest cinematic experience ever. I don't even. Think, I don't even think it's an argument. Mm. It's. It just is. But even then, like for a theatrical experience, I think like Rocky Horror Picture Show or something like that. Yeah, the best there is. Yeah, because you're with the people. Everyone's yeah. interacting with the film at the same time. Even, yeah, it's, even, it's even you, you said Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Going, mm-hmm. going every year, Montreal. Some cinema does a fucking midnight viewing of Texas yeah. Chainsaw for Halloween. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like that's a fucking blast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even that. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre never stops. It's ongoing. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and the thing is, so, so like, when I kind of got really into movies, I watched it. I used to watch this YouTube channel called uh, Cinefix, okay? Yeah, I know them. And they're, they're not called Cinefix anymore. I don't know. I, don't know uh, I think it's IGN Movies or something like that. Oh, uh, they got bought. Yeah, they got bought. But they still have the same content, still the same people. They don't, That was the first time where I saw people review and analyze movies where I was like, okay, they understand movies, right? Because they 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 have all they have knowledge from both sides, film production and the film studies. They they talk about Seven Seal, they talk about all these Herzog movies, but then they they like in the same list of whatever subject we're talking about, 
they'll put a big blockbuster movie in. They'll they'll talk about what they did yeah, good yeah. too, and then you know, because like the thing about all these directors, all these big blockbuster movies like Lord of the Rings, whatever, John Wick. There's people making these movies, directors. They're fucking film geeks too. Mm-hmm. They understand how to make movies because they are inspired yeah. by all these. Other, they are, they love Seven Seal. They love well, all even, this shit. I you know? mean, like this this whole wave of like indie movies are the only real movies anymore. All that shit, like nah, shut up. All the movies kids study in film studies, like all the classics, mm-hmm. were big budget Hollywood blockbusters. Yeah, but that's because back then making movies wasn't accessible. Yeah. So you had to make good yeah. movies, you know? Up now movies are so yeah. accessible that, like, like most blockbuster movies are pretty shit now. Yeah. But some are pretty good. Like, J- John Wick's were pretty good. Yeah, I mean, Christopher Nolan, every movie he's made is a big blockbuster hit. Oppenheimer mm-hmm. was a great movie. Yeah. Barbie was an amazing movie. Yeah, Barbie was Best movie of 2023, in my opinion. Nah. Of 2023, what else? Came right out? behind the moon, the moon Sky and You. <laughs> oh, did we ever do that? Did we ever do, like, a year's end episode? So, no. We should. We well, should. No, we, we should. Got time now. We should do a top ten. We should. Uh, we should be banging out content. I don't fucking. Know. <laughs> <laughs> says, says the guy who's having a hard time posting on Instagram for us. You okay, know? so how about this? How about mm-hmm. let's hit our personal reviews, wrap this up, and then we film a quick little uh, end year, year 20, twenty 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 three our sure. our picks. Sure. Sure. All, All right. right. So should I start? Yes. Um, man, I'm gonna score this thing hacking low. I'm warning you guys now. I, I have. Okay. Uh, Just a warning for the viewers. This camera's not on anymore, huh? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's recording. recording. It's rec- oh, it's recording. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was talking recording. to it the whole time. Should be fine. Just to remind our viewers, our scoring system is a five out of ten is perfectly average. All right. So and you know, I know a lot of people like to give oh, a, a, a bad movie a six out of ten. Six out of ten is like above, slightly above average. Seven is a good movie. Eight is a great movie. Mm-hmm. Nine, amazing. Ten, you got to be like the best movie ever made. Mm-hmm. I'm giving it a two. Two out of ten? I'm giving this movie a two out of ten. Wow. What about you next? No, I'll give it a two also. <laughs> I'm giving it this a two. Stinks, dude. I'm giving it a two out of ten. I'm giving it a one. Hey, out of 10. I thought you were going to go higher, to be no. honest. Wow. The thing for me that makes it a one. So for me, something like Basket Case, right? It's not a great movie. I love Basket Case, though. It's one of those movies that's so bad it's good kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's hilarious. I love Basket Case. He's flipping out right now. <laughs> I mean, I just think it's good. I don't think it's bad at all, dude. I just think it's good. No, but it's good. so insanely campy, good. you know? Yeah. Well, like, what's a better example? What's a, what's a really bad, so bad it's good movie, you know? The Room. Tommy Wiseau. Oh, okay. yeah. bro, we're not yeah. in yeah. film studies right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Just a so bad it's good movie. Bad you know? Biology. Bad Biology, right? Yeah. Right, that's we can agree that that one's not actually good. Mm-hmm. It's not actually good, but it's fucking. But good. It's, it's fucking <laughs> hilarious. It's good, so good. Good for numbers on YouTube. And that's something like objectively, I could give like a three out of ten or four out of ten, two out of ten, mm. that mm. kind of movie. Mm. But it gets that score because there is a good quality to it. It's so bad, it's good. It's, it's rede- hilarious, it's enjoyable. It's redeemable. For me, a one is like the worst movie ever. And for me, the worst movie ever is one that is so bad. It's not even so bad. It's good. You can't even laugh at it. It's just it's just not even enjoyable to watch. You know? I think if I were to ever give... Jenny, what do you think? <laughs> That's a 1 out of 10 from her. Okay. I think if I were... I think if I ever go lower than a 2, it's because I, I, I physically, like, couldn't even finish the movie. I had a hard time. Or, like, I went on my phone. Like, I tuned out. Like, I was like, this is mm-hmm. fucking garbage. Well, I was tuned out of that movie. I was close. But I, I suffered through it. I was... Um, I'm I jerked off halfway you. through. <laughs> Did you actually? It was a lesbian scene halfway through. What else are you gonna do? No, I was. Pull, I wasn't even watching that. I'd pull out my phone. You know. <laughs> All right. So ra- so average that out to a two. One point seven. Yeah. yeah one point seven. Yeah. All right. Pretty shit. Yeah, I think this crap. might be the lowest scoring movie we've ever done. Probably. Yeah. I think it so. is. It yeah. is. Because the thing is, it's not even bad enough to be funny. Mm-hmm. Hansel and Gretel get baked. That's so that's a movie you guys gave that movie a pretty low score too. Yeah. I have four, three, three, four, four like or three. Four or three. Yeah. 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 But are you gonna tell me that I would I would better, I would yeah. watch Hansel and Gretel get baked over right this. now before I watch this in ten years. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because yeah. Hansel Gretel get baked, it's really bad. Yeah. But yeah. it's hilarious. 
Yeah. And there's like good funny mo like you're laughing at it. Like it's yeah. just so yeah. the choices they make are so the stupid you, you and even, dumb. You can't even no. laugh at it. Can't you laugh. can't even laugh yeah. at it. It's just yeah. it's not even like yeah. Yeah. it gives you nothing. Oh we forgot to put up the fucking okay, whatever. It was oh that's why it's so white. That's why here. it's so white, yeah. It's so bad. Mm-hmm. I had to stay up extra late to watch another movie. After. Just after. so I oh, didn't go no. to bed Clear with the palette. Yeah. Oh, Luckily really. for me, you got, like, we were, Nick got here right after I finished movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I watched <laughs> the new Hell House after. Have you guys seen the Hell House movie? No. It was good. No. But, yeah, that's our reviews out of 10. 1.7 out of 10 for the Modest Film Club. Film Podcast Club. I, 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 I changed our name to the Modest Film Club because that's our original name. We, I thought it rolled off tongue more. But but now the more I say it, the more the Modest Film Pod rolls off the tongue more. Nah, we in the club now. We have we have merch over here. Check out this merch on the sexy man. We we're having merch. We're gonna have a drop soon. We in the club. Stay stay on. For, uh, check that out. Yeah what yeah else? stuff. Um, follow us everywhere. Subscribe whatever. Do all that shit. We're on all the platforms. You can get your podcasts on. Share like whatever the fuck you guys want to say anything else. I don't know. Comment suck an egg on that guy's comment. <laughs> You, you'll find it. You'll find Go it. like that comment. We like want that to be the most liked comment, comment ever. And if you have any movies you want us to review, yeah. let us know. Mm-hmm. If you've seen the movie and you disagree, tell us. Let us know. We'll have a yeah, discussion. Yeah, we, we want to hear your opinion. Um, so yeah. Our <laughs> yeah, we're coming Come after you, ball. boy. Well, we're coming after you, boy. Come on the phone. Come on the phone.